Hello everybody, Richard here, library storyteller, once again, hope you had a good weekend. So come with me and sit down in the grass outside that great wall that goes all the way around the city. Sit down in the cool shade of that wall. And here's the storyteller. He always seems to just appear, walking towards us. He's very well dressed today. He has a long, broad brimmed hat with a feather in it. And he sits down and looks around, doffing his hat. And he says, I, I had quite a busy weekend, but I bet you would like to know more. You know, last week I told you about the princess. She went through the, the sand of the desert. She found a library in the middle of a big rock. And I think it's fair to say, she found more than she bargained for. She found an underground world with some pretty strange characters. And the only way she got out was by flying on the back of a great cat. Yes, but you're probably wondering about her father. After all, he's the one who sent her and told her and he's the one who waited for her. She didn't come back and he waited a day, two days and then he shut the door of his room and began to pace up and down, muttering to himself. Why did I let her go? I promised, I promised. But why? Now she's gone, just like her mother went. Why? And all day he paced up and down. All night he brooded. And the following day again. And the following night. Why, why, why? Then early in the morning, fourth day, he opened his bedroom door. There was a rustle of silk of all the courtiers. And he looked and they said, uh, Your Majesty. He strode past them. And he said, I must, I must talk to everyone. He went to the balustrade that looked down, down the long, red carpeted staircase. And he shouted out, everybody, come here. His voice echoed through the castle and they came running. The courtiers, the knights, the guards, the gardeners, the cooks, the servants. Faces gazed up at him. And he said, Help! Help! She's gone! Where is she? Find her, please! Find her! Scatter! Take what you want! Just find her! Bring her back! The person who brings her back will have half my kingdom! Ah, oh, so everybody scattered. They took what they could find in the castle. They took pots and pans. They made packed lunches. They took the dogs. They took the horses. They took the soft furnishings. And they went. They went. North, south, east and west. The king went back to his bedroom, shut the door, sat down. Why? And there was only one person left, apart from the king in that castle. It was the lowest of the servant boys the lowest of all, because he slept by the fire and he was covered in ash. He didn't even have a name. They called him the Ash Boy. Now in the silence, he opened his eyes and listened. He couldn't hear the barking of dogs or the clucking of chickens or the rattling of pots. And he stood up and the ash 
fell off him in a great cloud. And in the silence he walked out of the kitchen. He hadn't been outside that castle. And when he looked up and saw the sky, he was astounded. Ooh, it's so blue. How beautiful. There was a little door that was left open in the garden. And he walked out of that door into the street. For the first time, he saw houses. Ooh, how tall they are so many windows and he saw streets and he followed the street and he kept on walking walking and walking amazed and astounded by what he saw until he came to the desert oh now there he looked with wonder what's this it's like ash but not there were some groups in the desert who appeared to have set up camp and had built fires and were cooking all the things they'd taken from the castle. There was laughter, but the ash boy walked on. Oh, look at that, he said, gazing at the desert. How big it is. And he walked on into the sand walking till the sand came up to his ankles, up to his knees, scrambling up dunes and going down the other side. The sand was a bit like ash. The day was hot, but the ash boy was used to heat. He walked on as the sun rose higher and burnt and he sweated. And there in the sand, he saw two things poking up. When he pulled them out of the sand, they were two golden slippers, embroidered and beautiful. Wow, said the ash boy. And he put them in his pocket and went walking. But now the day was hot. Now it was so hot, he could only stumble and gaze at his shadow as it got shorter and shorter. He fell down, he stood up again, he mumbled to himself, how be beautiful, how beautiful. And he saw the horizon. Over there, he said to himself, over there, I wonder what's, what's over there. It's so, so empty. And he walked on, slowly, slowly, slowly walked on. And now he would take a step and sit down and gaze around. And now it seemed that everything was swimming all around him. What's happening? He thought to himself, what's happening? And now, when he fell down, he couldn't get up. He just gazed, gazed up at the blue sky. And then he saw something gazing back at him. It was a camel. A circle of camels, said the ash boy. And on top of those camels, there was a circle of men. Grim, scarred, some with knives in their teeth, some simply gritting their teeth, some with no teeth. And the leader said, Who are you, boy? What's your name? I, 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 I don't have a name, 
don't have a name. Of course you have a name. What do they call you? They call me Ash Boy. Ash Boy. Ah. And now they started to talk to one another. He's small. He's scrawny. He's perfect. said, well then, Ash Boy, you're lucky we met you. We can help you if you help us. And Ash Boy looked at them and said, are you angels? <laughs> if you wish, Ash Boy, but you're coming with us. Yes, said the storyteller, jumping up, sticking his hat back on. It's all about mutual assistance, isn't it? Speaking of which, I have to go. Meet me here tomorrow and I'll tell you exactly what those brigands had in mind. And if you do the same with me, I'll do the same. So until tomorrow, goodbye.